after this, I really am going to need a nap. I am so excited that I finally have a rope bed. I once heard that no 18th century house is complete unless you have a rope bed. And I've been on a search for such a bed for, I would have to say 15 years. When I first came up this way to serve a little rural church, I had a old 18th century salt box that I purchased and I lived in. I still regret getting rid of that house. It was a sweet little house. And the upstairs bedroom came with what I did not know was a rope bed, but it didn't have any ropes and I had no idea what to do with it. I could get wooden slabs, but the problem was it wasn't a common size. So there was no modern mattress that would fit it. I didn't realize that you could have things custom made. I just didn't know back then. So when I moved out of that house, I didn't take the bed with me because I had no idea what to do with it. It wasn't until a year later that I realized what a treasure I had let go of, and I vowed to find another rope bed. It has taken me this long to find it, and I'm so excited. The ones that I did find were really ultra expensive, and I just wasn't willing or able to spend that much money to have um, a bed that my husband isn't really too into. So this bed that I have set up in our extra room in this little old house in Vermont, this would be more of my, um, well, this will be my little room to give me joy when I want to regress back into the 1700s and take a nap share with you this rope bed because I am wintering. And if you haven't heard of that word wintering, it is a verb that means to be in a season of rest, recovery, retreat. There has been a best-selling book by that name, Wintering, by Catherine May, and it is absolutely wonderful. And it's all about her experiences of just one thing after another happening in life that were, were um, challenging things, hard things. And she reflected on how in life there are seasons like this that try us. And it's like winter. We, we see desolation and death. But she points out that wintering, taking a step back, hibernating, being dormant, retreating, resting is our way to heal and get ready for the next big thing. I mean, it makes sense to me to winter. And I am in that season right now. It's a time in which you find yourself perhaps isolated or rejected or whatever it might be. And that's my season right now as I have, um, I'm no longer editor of the magazine, like many of you know, and it was part of my identity. And I know that's not right to have an identity in, in things that my worth is in God, but still it's a season that I'm in to adjust. About a week into not being at the magazine anymore, I found myself feeling anxious. Like I have to do my resumes. I have to search for a job. I have to be active. And then all of a sudden I thought about wintering and I thought about rest, retreating in order to recover. And it hit me. I need this time to heal. And what better way to heal than to embrace hibernation, rest, cocooning, whatever you want to call it. What better way to heal than to step back and really listen, listen to your life, listen to the divine. So I'm in my season of wintering and I think this is a God moment that about two weeks ago, this bed just came into my life. And I cannot thank, shout out to Sally Brion, 
of Wilson Homestead in Hebron, New York. That is where I got it from. She is my soul sister who loves the 18th century and wants to live that way. And she is just amazing. And the antiques that she has, I just love it. Sally, your bed has found a wonderful home here in Vermont. But it came into my life unexpectedly. There was just a Facebook post from her saying, I had this rope bed available. I emailed her right away and I'm like, I want this. And so after I was preaching at a church, I drove by and I picked it up. And as I was putting it together, which was quite a feat, I think it's a two person job, but I couldn't wait around for my husband. Patience is not my virtue. But when I was putting the bed together, I thought, this is a God moment. This is a God wink. This is a God hug. Whatever you want to call it, this is divine. Because I've been looking for 15 years for a rope bed. And, and it is such a perfect illustration or a perfect reminder that I am being called to rest. I'm being called to not feel guilty taking a nap and curling up underneath the quilt. I'm being called by the universe, by God, by the divine, whatever you want to call it. There's a greater force that's calling me to just stop trying to control my life. It's okay to take a step back in order to move forward. I thought about it some more this wintering in terms of so stopping and ceasing all action. This, this season of wintering in which we need to embrace in order to really have the life we want. We don't do that anymore. We don't embrace the seasons, what they're asking of us. We are a people who need to be in control, but yet we feel like that we are mini gods running around and we have everything in our power when really we don't. And I think that's why we need to just to relax and surrender and trust trust those moments in life, the spirit moments to guide us. All of nature embraces wintering, hibernation. Many animals just shelter down for the winter months. Flowers and plants, they are dormant in the ground waiting for the warmth of spring to, to, to arrive so that they could sprout again. When I thought some more about the hibernation of animals, I remember mentioning to a, um, a neighbor of mine that one day in the snow, I thought I saw bear prints and she just scoffed at that. And she goes, bears are hibernating now. You're not gonna see any bears. Well, I did some research and it is a fallacy that bears sleep all winter. They do tend to wake up in the winter and they might take a stroll, uh, but then they'll go back to sleep. They are still slumbering, but bear will appear in the winter. So I think they were bear tracks that I saw. But we think of hibernation as bears just sleeping all the winter long and nothing happening. It is in hibernation that bears will give birth. And while the mother is still slumbering, the cubs have to figure it out for themselves, how to, to feed, how to, to, you know, take care of themselves. And so I thought that was really powerful that what we see as hibernation is nothing happening as as you know, when we see something dormant as nothing going on, when we fight the urge to winter because we feel like we have to get stuff going, we need to remember that it's in these times that the greatest things can happen. It's just the way we look at everything. We view a lot of things that tell us to slow down or stop or retreat as bad or a failure. If we fear dark times, isn't those times God doing God's best work? Isn't the darkening sky 
the backdrop that makes the stars so bright. So I am wintering right now and I'm not going to feel guilty about taking a nap or, or slowing down. I know that in God's time, things will start happening again, but I can't be my best unless I rest. There was a minister friend of mine who once said that what, you know, when we were talking about spiritual formation and somebody asked, well, what is the greatest detriment to, to spiritual formation? The greatest hindrance to spiritual formation is exhaustion. When we're exhausted, we're not our best. There was a few years ago when I was editor of the magazine that I came about this um, article about a woman in Atlanta who was starting a nap ministry. And so I had a writer pursue this and share it with all of my readers. And it was powerful. It was a nap ministry and she was advocating the power of napping and retreating in order to do uh, the work of racial justice. And again, the premise was we can't be our best. We can't do the best work that we are called to do until we are at our best. And that means when we are well rested. So I invite you to embrace the season of wintering, to not be afraid of stepping back. It's not failure. To not see slowing down as a failure to take that nap and not feel guilty because your body needs it, your mind needs it, your soul needs it. And if you need any more proof that wintering is something that heals our soul, take a look at the Bible. It is filled with stories of how people rested and retreated before doing amazing things. The greatest example we have of wintering is Jesus. In all the accounts of his great miracles, it was always done after a time of rest. And then after the miracles, what did Jesus do? He often retreated. And so the great work of Jesus that was done in this world it was done with rest first and rest afterwards. It was anchored in prayer, in retreating, in stepping back from the busyness. That tells us a lot, my friends. So in the season of wintering, as I curl up underneath this quilt and not feel guilty about taking a nap, knowing that I need to heal, knowing that God is guiding me, I encourage you as well. Find that time to rest because I think you might be needing that today. I'm curious, what are your thoughts about wintering? And even though you might not have a rope bed in which to start to winter in, what are those places, those spaces that you can retreat to? What's a favorite nook? where you like to curl up with a good book and a blanket. How will you winter? I would love to know. So please send me your comments. And as always, if you enjoyed our time together and you haven't subscribed yet to this channel, please subscribe and share it with others. So my friends, here's to our time of wintering together. And I cannot wait to see what our spring times will look like. If I want to nap, I better stop with the coffee. <laughs>